How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and kick off the config and getting everything squared away. I decided to go ahead and actually show you the taking down the address families and things like that. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and kick this party off. So we're gonna bring this down. We're gonna focus on CSR5 first and foremost. And what I'm gonna do on CSR5 is get the initial configuration squared away. So if we do a show run VRFC1, for example, we are importing traffic, right? If we do a show BGP, v, VPN v4, unicast, all, we're receiving a bunch of routes, which is what we wanna have. So if I come in here underneath uh, VRF definition C1, and I was to remove v4 and v6, so no address family IPv4 unicast, and then do IPv6 unicast, and we do a, now the peerings come down. If we do show BGP, VPN v4, unicast, all, you'll notice that we're not receiving any routes from C, C1 anymore, right? And uh, if we were to do a show run VRF C1, we still have the route target values, right? They're still applied and all that type of stuff, but we had no address families applied. So what we can do is we can go to the global config and re-enable that and just reapply the IP addressing and get everything up and running. But the route target import stuff is still there. So just having the route targets themselves isn't sufficient. You need to have the address family to like have a, a database to place the routes into. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing on CSR6. I'm gonna come in here and config t do show run VRF C1 and VRF definition C1, no address family IPv4 or V6. So that should remove all the connectivity from that. Now, now that I've done that, let's go ahead and get the main interface of Gig3 up and running. So show IP interface brief. We have Gig3 on this side is good to go. Do show IP interface brief. It's good to go on this side as well. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go to global config, router BGP one. I'm gonna type in uh, neighbor, and let me just double check BGP, show run, sec, do show run section BGP. And right now you'll notice that in the global table, I don't have a peering, right? I just have my BGP peering to um, the route reflector. So if I type in neighbor of 12.5.6.6, remote AS of two, and then address family VPN before unicast, and I activate that, and then I type in, uh, do show run interface gig three. Uh, let me go to uh, interface gig three real quick, and type in IPv6 address is gonna be 12 colon five colon six colon colon five slash 64. And same thing on six. We go to interface gig three. IPv6 address is 12 colon five colon six colon colon six slash 64. Let me go back to CSR five and we're gonna router BGP one and then a neighbor of 12 colon five colon six colon colon five remote AS of two. I'm sorry, uh, six. And then address family VPN v6 unicast. And then we will activate that peering. I'm going to go over to CSR6 now. And I'm going to go to uh, router BGP2 neighbor of 12.5.6.5 remote AS of 1. And neighbor of 12. 12 colon 5 colon 6 colon colon 5 remote AS of 1. Address family VPN v4 unicast. We're gonna go ahead and activate that peering. And momentarily, we should get a peering to come online. Now, one thing you're gonna see is a command known as MPLS BGP forwarding. And that's going to allow the connectivity state of MPLS to work over this connection. So that's automatically going to do show MPLS forwarding table. That's automatically gonna create a label in the LBP database to point towards the next top. So there's gonna be an LDP label. There is no 
um, there is no BGP label that's generated. There's only an LDP label to get you from, because it's a transport, it's getting you from one router to the next between the ingress PE routers, and you need that in order to get you from point A to point B. Now, five does the same thing. So do show MPLS forwarding table, come all the way down here at the bottom, and we have this label has been allocated for forwarding the traffic. So now what we'll end up doing is we uh, we have the um, we have the BGP peering up. So let's actually do on six. Let's type in um, address family VPN v6 unicast and hit the up arrow a few times. And actually, I'm sorry, it's on this side. Config T router BGP two address family VPN v6 unicast. I should be able to come in here and activate this peering. And we should get an IPv6 peering between five and six as well. And once that happens, we uh, we should be in pretty good shape. There it goes. So now, if I was to do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all, I'm going to have a peering. And you can tell that there's nothing really happening here, right? If I was to do a summary, you can see that I haven't learned any routes. Why haven't I learned any routes? Well, that's because of the fact that I don't have any way of receiving any routes, right? So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to um, go and configure the connectivity so that customer one will propagate. So um, if we look at this show BGP VPN before unicast all, I am learning prefixes, right? If I go over to, uh, if I go over to CSR5 and I do a show BGP VPN before unicast all, I am learning routes between them. And, but you'll notice that I'm learning them based off the VRF and not based off of the connections between them. And so the option B variation, because I would have, uh, this should be a different address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, interface gig 3.101, shut it down, 102, shut it down, and 103, shut it down. And I'm going to do show history, and I'm going to wash, rinse, and repeat this on CSR 6. Take all that down. So now that that's been done, and we go back to CSR5, do show BGP VPN v4 unicast all, I'm only receiving the traffic from, and I still have VRFs configured, so if I was to exit out and uh, do show, if I was to go and, I had the peerings up in the global table, and so what I need to go do is on, I'll go ahead and do the, the VRF configuration on um, customer one. So do show run VRF C1. And I'll go underneath VRF definition C1. Address family IPv4 and IPv6. Do show history. I'll do the same thing here on six. I'll get that squared away. I'll go back to five do show BGP VPN v4 unicast all I'm now receiving traffic for both but now that I've done that I need to go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do from an operations perspective so the VRF is created locally but you'll notice that I'm not exchanging any routes right so I'm only learning what was in my local AS so I've got 19 22 23, 21, 24, that's all the stuff that on this side of the connection. If we were to do a debug, BGP VPN v4 unicast updates inbound and do a clear BG, uh, clear VPN v4 unicast star soft, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to receive a bunch of stuff from the other side, right? So I'm going to go ahead and let that finish doing its thing. 
what's happening in, from a VRF specific perspective is that notice that the when I receive a route coming in from 1, 3, 27, and 27 is over on this side, right? That's this router right here. Notice that the extended community is not supported. So I need to actually change the route target value. I need to update that and say, okay, I need to receive that particular route value in. So right now, if we do a show run VRF C1, I'm only importing stuff that I need to import. So if I was to go over to CSR6 and do show run VRF C1, I need to import 2 colon 6, 2 colon 8, 2 colon 16. By doing that, that will allow me to bring those routes in. So by importing whatever is coming from uh, 8 and 16, that should allow me to do that. So if we were to come over here and I'm still show debug, I'm still debugging. So if I come in and I go to global config and VRF definition C1, I type in route target import 2 colon 8. I should be able to bring in a bunch of prefixes because that's what I should be able to bring in. 2 colon 8 is bringing in routes from CSR8. I do that. And now if I do show BGP, VPN, B4, unicast, all, you'll notice that I've got traffic coming from router 25. Now, that wasn't there before. And if I do the same thing for 2 colon 16, I'm going to receive routes from XR16 now. So if I do that show unicast, now I've received everything. And that's what you need to do. That's got it. You have to tell the ASBR what the prefix is to receive when you do this. So there's that. So let's go over to the other side. Actually, let me what what update? So logging or um, line console zero logging synchronous, and then we're gonna go do show run VRF C1. I need to um, import one colon one and one colon two on CSR6 side. So we're going to go underneath VRF definition C1. We're typing route target import is going to be 1 colon 1 and 1 colon 2. So we did that. And so CSR5 is going to go and do a little bit of a push. CSR6 should now see those values come in. On 5, that's what we were needing to push. So 1 colon 1 and 1 colon 2 do show BGP, VPNV4, unicast, all. And now we should, we are receiving traffic from 12.5.6.5. Now that will go to the route reflector. We look on here, show BGP, VPNV4, unicast, all. We're receiving traffic for this guy right here, which is what we expect to see, we're, we're getting 25 and 28 inbound, but you'll notice that when we look at those specific things, we look at RD2 colon 1, specifically for this particular prefix, what you're going to see is that it's inaccessible. So well, if we go over to CSR5 and we exit out router BGP1, address family VPN before unicast, and we type in neighbor of 12.5.6.6 and we type in next top self and we do clear IPBGP star soft and we go over to the rot reflector and we hit the up arrow after a moment or so I'm sorry it's not 5.6 it's that's my mistake um, it's it's neighbor of 1.0.0.101 next top self do clear IP BGP star soft go back to the route reflector hit the up arrow and now we're pointing towards router 5's loopback address now that gets us routes to we look at the all now we have updates we're pointing towards router 5 which is what we want now if we look at CSR 1 show BGP VP and V4 unicast all we are not receiving any of those routes. So show run VRF 
uh, C1. Again, it ties back to the importation. So VRF definition C1, we're going to type in route target import. We're going to type in, um, I believe it is, it's, what is 6 configured for? Um, 2 colon 8, 2 colon 16. So we'll type in uh, 2 colon 8 and 16, respectively. Do show BGP, BBNV4, Unicast, all. And now we're receiving those prefixes in. And it's important because now if we do show IP route VRF C1, we can see the 25, well, actually, they're not there yet. 25 and 28 actually have not made it in. Oh yeah, they are, they're right there. That's because, you know what, that's because of the fact that um, the connectivity from XR11 was still up. Let me go to XR11 and fix that real quick. That's my fault, I neglected to do that. Do show IP interface brief. Uh, interface gig 00002.101 shut, 102 shut and 103 shut and we're going to go ahead and commit that that'll bring down the peerings and then we go back to router one we hit the there it goes so now it's being learned from five instead of xr11 you can see the change now and if we look at r19 for example and we do a show ip route we can see that 25 and 28 they didn't really go anywhere because the, the update would happen so fast, but CSR 8's not there. So we have to go over to CSR 8, and we have to go to uh, CSR 6. So because on, uh, if we go to Route Reflector 2 now, we have to do the other side. If we do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast, we're going to see that the update's coming in. We do RD of 1 colon 1, specifically one of these prefixes right here, it's going to be a next top is inaccessible. So we have to go back to CSR6 and underneath router BGP2, address family VPNV4, unicast, neighbor of 2.0.0.20, next top self. So do show BGP VPNV4 unicast all summary just to validate that that's the IP do clear IP BGP star soft to push the update. Go back to route reflector two. We hit the up arrow and now we're pointing towards router six. And then we have to go to CSR eight and we have to show run VRF C1. And we're gonna go to, let me just validate that 12, his peerings came down. Uh, show BGP VRF C1 neighbor. I'm sorry, summary. Yeah, show IP interface brief. Um, config T interface gig 2.101 shut. 102 and 103 shut. All of a sudden now we're starting to get the BGP uh, uh, updates that things are now going sideways so now we're going to go back to CSR 8 and we'll go to VRF definition C1 and we'll type in route target import is going to be 1 colon 1 and 1 colon 2 and if we uh, do show BGP VPN before unicast all we should see those coming in which we do and then if we go to router 25 for example show IP route, we'll have learned 19 and 22 respectively inbound, which is what we should be seeing. So now we should have end-to-end -end connectivity because I've already done the next top self update. I've done the, um, I've done all the route target import values, all that type of stuff has already been done. So now I should have reachability end-to-end. -end. Let's test that out. So if I do a ping to 10.1.19.19, Sourcing from loopback one, I can ping it. Now if I do the same thing, but I trace this time numerically, 
you'll notice that I take a path over CSR5 and CSR6 based off of this output, but you notice the label value. Before it was just an IP hop, and now you have, it's not an end-to-end -end label switch path, right? It's not end-to-end, -end because we have three of them. We have one going from our ingress, um, ingress PE router to our egress ASBR, and then we have one going over the ASBR link between five and six, and then we have a third one going from CSR5 to CSR1. So we have three LSPs. If it was end-to-end, -end, you'd see the same uh, VPN label end-to-end, -end, where you would if you're doing intra-AS. In this case, you're not seeing that. So that's how that would uh, be solved and be operational. So let's go ahead and do the same thing, get the rest of this configuration working for um, XR11 and XR12. Okay, so we'll get that guy squared away. We'll do the rest of the config on CSR2 and XR16 and get them squared away so that we can have end-to-end -end connectivity. Now on XR11, we're gonna do show IP interface brief. And we don't have a interface con uh, IP address at the major interface. So interface gig 0002, IP address is gonna be 12.11.12.11 slash .11 24. And we have IPv6 address is going to be 12 colon 11 colon 12 colon colon 11 slash 64. We're going to go ahead and commit that. And 12 will do the same thing. Now, one thing I just remembered, I haven't done the same config for BGP. But a lot of the same configs are pretty much necessary. So once you do the route target importation, you've done it for both address families. So especially when you do it at the at the at the the root level of a VRF, you've done it for both address families. We'll just have to do a couple minor tweaks with the next top self and that type of stuff. We'll type in uh, interface gig 0002, IP address of 12.11.12.12 slash .12 24, and IPv6 address of 12 colon 11 colon 12 colon colon 12 slash 64. We're going to commit that config. Let me just make sure that on CSR5, for example, we do a show BGP VPNv6 unicast all. We are receiving prefixes, but what I'm going to go do here is router BGP1 address family VPNv6 unicast neighbor of 10. Um, 101. We'll type in next top self. Uh, do show run section BGP. that I do. Okay, so it's not actually that one. It's, it's uh, there we go. Next up self and do clear IP BGP star soft. So now if we go back over to router factor one and do a show BGP VPNV six unicast all, we should be receiving routes in, which we are right here. So let's just do that on CSR6 real quick. Um, so we'll go to address family VPNv6 unicast, and then we'll type in router BGP2 address family VPNv6, oh, a unicast, and neighbor of 2.0.0.20 next top self, and do clear IP BGP star soft. Check route reflector two, show BGP VPNv6 unicast, and we are receiving traffic. So let's look at, for example, router 19. We do a show IPv6 route. We are receiving 25 and 28, respectively. That's working. And so that means I should be able to do a, I'll do a trace route, trace route, IPv6 to 10 colon 1 colon 25 colon colon 25 of 10 colon 1 colon 19 colon colon 19. We will do a numeric display and then we'll do an end to end trace and see how that plays. I'll pause for a moment. All right. Um, you can see that we had some timeouts and whatnot, but um, the config was pretty straightforward and you can see the IPv4 hop. Because there is technically there is no LDPv6, 
Um, so you really can't demo it through just a pure IPv6. So we're doing six virtual PE. Um, so our VPN, um, VRF based provider edge for IPv6 traffic. So it's gonna be just like IPv6, or I'm sorry, six VPE, like you would see intra AS, except for this time we're just using option B and option B is working. So let's go ahead and finish up the config on XR11 and get all those bits taken care of. So I'm not gonna spend as much time breaking it down as I did before, but we're gonna router BGP. Uh, let's go to VRF. Uh, so the only drawback to doing it this way is when you do show run VRF, you'll, you're placing the VRFs underneath the address families. So if I was to just pull the, the peerings out, that should still work which I'm not too terribly worried about that right now. I can deal with that. VRF uh, C1, no address family, IPv4 unicast, and IPv6 unicast. So let's just see what this is gonna look like. I've actually never done this before. So we're just gonna go ahead and commit that, and then do show run VRF C1. So, okay, so just a matter of reapplying the config. So no big deal. So let's go uh, VRF C2. Hit the up arrow a couple times, and the four, and show config, and we'll just copy and paste this in for the C3, copy paste, and then commit. Actually, let's do a show config, and we'll just speed this process up a little bit. Commit that config, and then do show IP interface brief. Um, so do show run interface gig 2.101, for example. Okay, so the VR still stays assigned and the IP addressing doesn't get removed, which is nice. Where in iOS, it rips it all out, so it's kind of ugly about it, but it's okay. So in XR2, we're typing VR, uh, VRF C, C1, no address family IPv4 unicast or IPv6. And then we'll just do C3 and C2, commit that config. And then we're gonna go to, um, back to 11. So if we do show BGP VPN before unicast, we shouldn't be receiving any prefixes, which is what we wanna have. So if we were to re-enable the, the address families, we should be able to receive traffic in. So if we were to go back to 11 and uh, VRF, C1, address family IPv4 unicast and IPv6 unicast. And just commit that. Do show BGP VPN v4 unicast. We, sh we might need to import. I'm just trying to think if it would make a difference. Uh, import route target. And we're gonna specify um, one colon one, commit that. Hmm. Summary. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm exporting, right? I believe show run VRF C one. One colon one, yeah. So if I did that on eleven, do show run VRF C one. I'm importing one colon one. Oh, that's under IPv4. Um, so let's do this again, but underneath IPv4. Commit that. Do show BGP VPN v4 unicast. Yeah. So that's I just need to re-enable that. So I'll just pause the video and allow that traffic to come back in and get that back up and running. And then we'll do the BGP, uh, the VPN before peering. So um, I'll do that real quick. Actually, you know what, before I do that, let me just do the, um, cause I'm gonna be getting rid of the VRFs anyway. So I'll get the BGP, the peering between 12, 11 and 12 working first. So, cause I wanna focus on that piece first. So what we'll do is a router BGP one, we'll type in neighbor 
of 12.11.12.12, remote AS of 2, address family VPNv4 unicast, and then route policy of RPL ABGP peer in and out. And we'll go ahead and uh, commit that. And then on 12, we'll do the same thing. Router BGP2, or, uh, neighbor of 12.11.12.11, .11 remote AS of 1, address family VPNv4 unicast, and then route policy of EBGP peer in and out. And then we're going to commit that. Actually, let's uh, let's do the v6 as well. We'll do neighbor neighbor of 12 colon 11 colon 12 colon colon 12 remote AS of two address family VPN v6 um, unicast VPN v6. Oh, I bet you I didn't um, do show run via uh, BG router BGP. I enabled it. Why is it not giving me um, address family neighbor of 12 colon 11 colon 12 colon colon 12 remote AS of 2 address family VPN v6 unicast okay that's weird anyway uh, no it's not taking it okay I, I vaguely remember something like this happening in the past where you couldn't do it or is it do show run router do show run router BGP. Because right now I've got it set up to peer. So let's go back underneath this one. Remote AS of 2, address family VPNv6 unicast, route policy of EBGP in and out commit okay do show run router BGP is it gonna let me apply both it does okay that's cool um, and we'll go address family VPN v6 and I'll hit the up arrow a couple times out and then in and commit so I should be able to form a peering between both address families. So do show BGP VPNv4 unicast summary. And I have a peering. So 11 is not peering with do show IP interface brief. Okay, there's the peering. So the peering's up now between 11 and 12. Again, we're not we're not going to, going to exchange any routes with each other because there's no routes being learned by the ASBRs. I don't know if v6 is going to form. Oh, that did too. Okay. So it, it did both of them form, which is nice. So now that I've done that, let's go. I'm going to, now that I have the uh, VPN v4, VPN v6 period between the ASBRs done, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to go back and configure the VRFs to do all the route target imports that they need, get them straight uh, squared away. And then we'll go in and finish um, doing the AS the PE router importation and make sure we set the next top selves. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. Okay, so now that we have all the route target values have been reapplied, the next thing for us to do is to go on the um, router BGP one underneath the VPN or uh, neighbor of 1.0.0.101 
Address Family VPNv4 Unicast and type in Next Top Self. And then same thing with VPNv6 Next Top Self. Commit that. And then on 12, do the exact same thing. And so we're tr I'm I'm not really in the mood to really show you all the you know before and after. If you don't do this, this is what's going to end up happening. You're already aware of these things from the the uh, iOS variation of it. So I want to just spend the time getting in the config that you need to make sure is there so you don't run into problems. So heading problems off before they become them. So we're going to go to router BGP2 um, neighbor of 2.0.0.20 address family VPN v4 unicast and then next top self and the same thing with v6 commit that config now, I'm going to wait on the static route here for just a minute. And what I'm going to do is on CSR1, I'm going to, I should be able to receive routes. So if I look at route reflector 1, for example, and I show BGP VPN before unicast all, I'm not receiving anything from 11 yet. So let's see. 11's learning routes, so do show BGP VPN before unicast. And I'm not receiving anything from 12. 12 should be I'm not learning for anything from 11 either, although I do have prefixes, local prefixes installed. The and so I'm not exchanging any routing information. So let's do a show run VRF. If we look back at CSR5, for example, show run VRF. Notice that when we did the VRF, we had to do the import of some other side. So we'll do 11, and what I'll do is a root vrfc1 address family ip4 unicast import route target value and it's going to be uh, 2 colon 8 and 16 respectively and then uh, same thing for v6 import route target and then 2 colon 8 2 colon 16 we're going to go ahead and commit that config Actually, let's do a show config real quick. We'll commit it and do show BGP VPNv4 unicast. So now we're receiving updates inbound. And then if we go look at the route reflector, we're going to start to see stuff come from 11 as well with the, um, the next, top set, uh, next top is set. So on here, we need to go in and do basically the same thing. We need to make sure that whatever the VRF is set. So VRF C2, address family IPv4 unicast, uh, import route target value. And we're gonna specify, this will be whatever CSR8 is set up for. So in this case here, it'll be C2. We'll specify 208 and 216 colon two. So on 11, we'll do the two, dot zero dot zero dot eight colon two and sixteen and for IPv6 same thing and hit the up arrow a few times commit that and then VRF C C3 uh, uh, yeah C3 address family IPv4 unicast um, import route target and then we're going to specify uh, 203 colon 8 I believe is what it was set up as when in doubt check it out 203 colon 8 yep and 203 colon 16 b6 now
and then um, commit to config. So that side's now receiving those routes. So if I go back to the route reflector, I'm receiving stuff for two. Should be receiving a lot more. But yeah, so two and two, two, uh, two colon two and two colon three. They're squared away now. So that's what I basically needed to have, and that's all working the way that it needs to be. But why am I not seeing five? Then I not do these additional configs. Show run VRF C2. Oh, that's because I only did that side. So let's go ahead and get this guy squared away too. So we'll go to here VRF C2, VRF definition C2. And we'll type in route target import is going to be uh, 2.0.0.8 colon 8. I'm sorry, 2 and 16 colon 2 and then we'll do uh, that does it both so let's go back to C3 and then we'll do route target import is going to be uh, 203 colon 8 and 16 so that should allow that and then we'll do the same thing on CSR 6 so VRFC2 VRF definition C2 um, route target import is going to be uh, 1.0.0.1 colon 2 and 2 colon 2 and then C3 will be route target import of 103 colon was was this I honestly forgot show run VRF C3 103 colon 1, that's right. Uh, 103 colon. Right, it was 1, right? Yeah. 1 and 2. So we have that. So now if we go back to Route Reflector 1 and hit the up arrow, we should have m way more diversity now, which is what I was expecting. Anything that's local to AS1, I won't see anything in for it, but now that I do, that's a good sign because now we have all that squared away and if we go to route reflector 2 show BGP VP and V4 unicast we should see a bunch of we should see more diversity than what we've, what we've been seeing CSR 6 I do show BGP VP and V4 unicast all I'm seeing a lot more routes coming across which is good and then if I route reflector two, we'll start to see a bunch more traffic coming across as well. So we've seen eight and 16, eight and 16, which is good. So now that we have all that in play, I see XR is gonna have a slightly different output on things. But if we look at um, like 23, and we're only seeing that stuff from 23. XR12 must not be configured yet. Do show run VRF C2. Oh, that's right, because I'm not I mean not importing those VRFs. So let's go back to VRF C2. And then we're gonna go um, do the we have to import the stuff from C1 and C2 or from router one and router two. So it'll be address family IP4 unicast route target import. No, I want to go root, um, no, abort, BRF C2, address family, IP4 unicast, import route target, and it's going to be uh, 1 colon 1 and 2, and then V6 will be the same thing. And then we'll go to commit that. So now Route Reflector 2 should see more diversity, which he is for router, for uh, customer 1's VRF. Back on 12, 
if we go to VRF C3 and then address family IPv4, oh, I'm sorry, that's that was C C1. I mean, well, I messed up there. So do show run VRF C2. I messed up. That should not be that. Those are C1 routes. So let me pause the video, fix my mistake, because I need to get rid of these guys from here. Let me just go ahead and do that. Alright, so I've added the necessary configs in the places that they need to be added. So now we have diversity where we need them, which is good. So if we were to do a do show run VRF C3, for example, we're going to see that we uh, have additional entries in the importation, so we know everything's working from there. Now the only thing left to do is go to CSR2 and make sure that we validate the config. So show run VRF C1, um, C1. we're not importing any of the new uh, values. So VRF C1 or VRF definition C1, we'll type in the route target import and we're going to have to do something to the effect of like 2 colon 8 for Sorry, 2 colon 8 for uh, router 8, 2 colon 16. So do show BGP, VPN, V4, unicast, all. So we should now see um, routes for 25 and 28 come in. But you'll notice we haven't seen anything come in for VRFC2. So if we do the same logic here, route target import, but we focus on 2.0.0.8 colon 2, and we run that same command again, we're going to start to receive stuff for two, which we do. We can see 26 come in, which connects to CSR8. And so we'll just do 16, and then we see stuff for 29 come in now, which is good. So we do CSR or um, C3, and we do route target import of uh, 10, in this case here, 203 colon 8 and 16. We shouldn't see now stuff for router three or for VRFC three coming in now, which we do. So that makes it very easy to get it working on um, iOS. Now let's go ahead and knock it out on 16 real quick. So we're going to go log in on 16. Com uh, come up here and we're going to do VRFC one. We're going to type in address family IP four unicast import route target, and the value is going to be one colon one and one colon two, and the same thing for IPv6. And two, and then we'll commit that config. Do show BGP VPN before unicast. We should see one colon one coming in, which we do. But if we come all the way down, we don't see anything for one colon two or one colon three. So we'll just, Wash, rinse, and repeat a little bit here. C2, address family, IPv4 unicast, import route target, and we're going to type in a 1.0.0.1 .0 .0 .0 um, colon 2 and 2 colon 2, v6 unicast, and then 2, commit that config. Do show BGP VPN V4 unicast. Okay, so now we see one colon two there. And lastly, but certainly not least, VRFC3. Address family IPv4 unicast. Uh, import route target. And then we'll type in the 103 colon 1 and 103 colon 2. V6, same thing, import route target. And then 1 and then commit. Do show BGP VPN before unicast. So now we should see one colon three, which we do. So now we have all the reachability is there. So now if we were to check router 30, for example, and show IP route, we're going to have multiple routes, which is what we want to see. Now, if we were to do a ping test, well, let's just validate from a route reflector perspective that this is all working now. So we have all the reachability that we need. So from XR16, if we were to do a uh, show route, I'm sorry, show BGP VPN before unicast, we're going to choose to get to um, 
to a particular destination, we're going to go via router six. You can see that right there, right? Well, that's not going to really work for us in the event that we need to go via XR 11 or 12. So I want to, I'm going to go to five and six, show run section BGP, and I'm going to do something real quick, router BGP one, neighbor of 12.5.6.6, I'm going to shut down the connection. So that's going to take down the peerings. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to demonstrate that just because some things are working doesn't mean everything's working. So we have route propagation, everything's looking good, but we still have one critical thing we haven't typed in yet. So if I go back to uh, XR16, I hit the up arrow. Now we're going to be forced to go via 12, right? We have no choice in the matter. So now if I try to go to 30 again, I try to do a ping to 10.3. Um, let's do 21.21, .21, sourcing from loop. Sourcing from, oh, my. sourcing from loopback three, the ping dies, right? I, I have no idea how to get there. So it actually, it's it's a very simple solution. I've already talked about it. It's a static routing on uh, iOS XR. So let's go and take a look at exactly how that's working. So if we if we pin this in, we go ahead and jump out of the way real quick. If I hit the up arrow. And I do a whoops, uh, source loopback. We do a trace route numerically. We get to XR16 and then we die, right? So what we have to do is we have to go over to XR12 and go to root and type in router. Uh, if we do show MPLS forwarding table, in the forwarding table, we're going to have this guy right here, it's an aggregate. This right here is a bad thing because there's no LDP label for that next hop. So what we'll do is we'll type in router static, address family, IPv4 unicast, and we'll type in 12.11.12.11 slash 32 out gig, gig two. We're gonna go ahead and commit that. It's gonna squabble at us and go, oh, you shouldn't do that, that's not a good idea. You know, make sure that that's exactly what you want. We're gonna do the show MPLS forwarding table again, and now what you're gonna have is right here. Now we have a label value associated to it. You need a static route in BGP, or in a, a host a static default route, sorry, a host static route to the next hop. So in order for a LDP label to get assigned. So we're gonna do the same thing on 11. Go ahead and log in and go to global config. And as a matter of fact, on that here, I'm gonna do that ping again, but I'm gonna do a repeat of like 100 or a thousand times. We go back to 11, router static, address family IPv4 unicast, and I'm gonna type in 12.11.12.12 uh, .12 slash 32 is out gig, gig 0002, commit and let that let it freak out about it for a second and do show MPLS forwarding table and then look at the entry in the, the table that shows that there is a label that's been associated. Now if I go back to 30, we should have reachability. Let's see why we don't. So the next hop, help, next hop self has been set for all of that. Let's go and see what the problem is. So we should have connectivity and we don't. So what is the, the issue? So if we look in here, we do a show MPLS, show BGP, we've got all that forwarding for us. So let me think here, is there anything that I'm missing? I don't think there's anything that I'm missing. Let's try a trace route again, see if there's any, get the 16. So it's trying, but it's not getting anywhere. So we do a show, show MPLS forwarding table. No, nothing's in there that's out of the ordinary. Let's see, everything looks good. 
trying to think what else is there that I could be missing on well one of the things that could be missing on CSR one side let me just double check here in the config show run um, brfc1 am I importing the correct yeah I'm importing the correct brfs or the route target values that's all working correctly let's validate c2 oh c2 is not doing it correctly so I'm not importing the correct values for this guy so let's go fix that even though it doesn't it's not applicable to that setup specifically brf definition c2 uh, route target import we're gonna do a um, 2.0.0.8 colon 2 and 16 colon 2 and do show run VRF C3 oh that's our problem right there so so my config wasn't 100% spot on the static route I thought was the last step but I forgot the raw target import so we're gonna go ahead and fix that real quick here so VRF definition C3 I'll type in uh, route target import we're going to do one oh, or I'm sorry, this will be uh, 203 colon uh, 8 and 16, respectively. So now, if I go to router 21, which I should have done in the beginning, but I didn't, show IP route, I should have routes now in the routing table. So now, if I go back to 30 and I try to do that ping again, the ping should work without a problem. So, control shift 6 on that, and then we're going to do a trace route to it. And so we should take a labeled path to the destination, which we should. So that's the logic and config with this. It's rather involved. Um, now, mind you, this is why VRFs, the VRF way is not a good idea. It's not scalable. So for every new customer that you al uh, allocate this to, you have to make sure that both sides, um, or every new PE router that you add, um, you have to make sure that the route target values are imported so that the distribution of routing information is done correctly. As you can see, you know, I've, I've done this quite a few times. I'm comfortable with the config, but even I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot to do that. And I'm checking basically each hop along the way, making sure everything's squared away. If it's not, that's when you start to run into problems. So keep that in mind when you're moving forward, and you should be okay. Now, I'm going to do upcoming videos where we blow away the VRFs again on the iOS on the ASBRs and then um, we're going to go and do the other variations where we do the um, the route reflection and the, the BGP route target filter has been disabled. The A, the PE routers still need to have the route target imports though. So the ASBRs are the ones that are not going to use that. So just keep that in mind as you're moving forward. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.